so, are humans naturally good? And if so, do we have to be taught to be evil? Or is it vice versa? Are we naturally evil and we need to be taught to be good? Well, you guys are in luck today because I just happen to be the foremost expert on goodness. <laughs> so let's get into our presentation. Are humans good or evil? Uh, I should point out I do have ADHD, so I made myself a little chart of what we're going to be talking about. I want to talk about how uh, tragedy inspired me on this journey. I want to give you some examples of some of the amazing human greatnesses that have come out of it. And I want to talk about why we're so infatuated with being good. So before we can begin, I need to define what is good and evil, right? So we can put on a scale, so we're all on the same page here. At one end of the spectrum, you're going to have the best of the best, your Mother Teresa's, people who spend their whole life being good. And at the exact opposite end of the spectrum, you're going to have people like Hitler, people who want to destroy the human fabric, to destroy society. And then somewhere in between is basically everybody else, right? So start thinking about yourself. Where do you fall into this? Mostly good, evil, right? And we're talking good and evil here. I'm not talking good and stupid. I'm not talking about the high school kid who gets dared to go in the Wawa to steal a pack of gum. Evil, not so much. Dumb, probably. So we're talking about good and evil, all right? So think about yourself. Where do you land on that scale? And think about all your friends. Where do they land on the scale? Generally, good people hang around good people, and evil people hang around evil people, right? So how did I come to all this realization? Tragedy in, through inspiration. September 11th, 2001. I remember exactly what I was doing. I was a graphic designer in an ad agency in South Jersey. And just like you, I was shocked, horrified, depressed. But almost instantly, I became inspired by the event. I was inspired by the firefighters who were flying in and driving up from other states. I was inspired by the police officers who came in to help out from neighboring cities. And the EMTs who were coming from all over the country, they were heroes, and I wanted to be one. But I was a graphic designer in South Jersey. I, I, never in the history of humanity during a major, major situation anyone say, is there a graphic designer in the house? <laughs> it hasn't happened. So what was my value, my purpose on the planet as a graphic designer? And that's when I saw this. I saw hundreds of thousands of photos of all the missing people on the walls. It was shocking to me. But at the same exact time, I remember looking at this and saying, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Posting paper all around the city. Hopefully someone will stumble across and look at the piece of paper you stuck up. I said, there has to be a faster, more efficient way for people to connect directly to themselves. A few years later comes Hurricane Katrina. They had a similar situation, not only just finding people, but they also needed to have food, shelter, water. And I remember saying, well, the same system could work for finding people as opposed as also helping people. I literally was watching TV, and there was a guy, and he said, it's been three weeks. FEMA's not around. I guess they were on break, kind of like the government took again this year. And he needed water. I had a case of water next to me. I yelled at the TV. I said, if I knew where you were, I'd send you this water. But I didn't. And that bugged me. So I went and said, let me start building this platform so people can get help from other people. And it's very simple. One person posts up their needs, and anyone else is allowed to help. I call them wishes, wishers and heroes. And that's how the system works. Over 100,000 good deeds have been done by good humans. And I want to talk about some of them because it's very interesting what I found out. I want to give you some examples. Our first wish that went up, Sergeant Rich De Palma working over in Iraq to protect Americans, right? He's out there with his contacts. It's sand. It's dry. He can't wear his contacts. So he puts on his glasses. But with the helmet, it leans on his nose. They fog up. He wishes for LASIK eye surgery. I remember when it went up, I was like, why can't he wish for something small, like Tic Tacs or something that, I just started this thing, he's wishing for $5,000. But amazingly, an eye surgeon says, we love to help out our military. We do this. We're going to help them. And they all rallied around, went, 
he has LASIK eye surgery for free because they went to help out. Another amazing wish. Daughter of a retired Houston police officer. She wishes for her father a kidney. I remember saying, a kidney? What are you going to do with a kidney? But her father was on the waiting list. It's a three-year waiting list. He didn't have that much time. He had six months. 13 people made offers if they were a match. One was a match, and we helped him get a kidney. He's alive, doing well today. Viral wish that we had last year, Hurricane Sandy, which you guys are probably very familiar with being in this area. Zoe lost both her parents. She was one of four siblings. We helped raise over $60,000 in less than 24 hours. People from across the world are donating, $5 here, $10 there. Humans doing good everywhere. A woman from Vancouver, Canada says, I want to walk up the Rocky steps, like Rocky. I said, good, go ahead. Turns out she has cerebral palsy. Hundreds of people come out to help her, cheer her on. A band plays the Rocky music. Uh, a Rocky impersonator showed up. Jo uh, uh, Charles Wepner shows up, the guy who Rocky's based on. They all rallied around. People want goodness, is what I'm getting to here. You know, even things as simple as, I wish for a diamond ring has been granted. A woman says, you know what, I don't need my diamond ring, I'm a widow. I guess I could probably sell it for a few hundred bucks, but I'd rather give it to you. Human connection is what's going on. And then one of her most heroic wishes, Michael Juhas served and fought at Pearl Harbor, and he went to go back for his 90th birthday. People from around the country donated, and companies came forward to make sure he went back, and he got to go back to Pearl Harbor, his 90th birthday wish. So, Point being is, look at what's going on out there. I've seen this 100,000 times. People are running into the ocean, raising money for charities and things. Why are people doing this? Are you people insane? So why do people do help? Cause, location, social. People are connected through causes. Autism, cancer, right? If someone has something you're familiar with, there's a cause connection. Locational based. If the location is closer to you, the more connected you are. You know, something happens over in another country, you go, ah, it's way over there. Something happens in the United States, you go, ah, oh, it's in the United States now. Something happens in New Jersey, you start saying, like, ah, oh, my God, I can't believe it happened in New Jersey. What happens when it happens in your neighborhood? You're calling people up because you're emotionally connected, connected through location. And then there's the social factor of why people help. People help on a social factor when they say, oh, my God, I want to help you out. I didn't know you had, you're a single mom with three kids. Oh, three daughters? I, I get that. And the miracle comes when you hit the cause, location, and social. If somebody says, oh, you know, my daughter has autism, I'm a military mom, I live in your town, you say, what do you need? Well, I need this or I need that. You're there to help them instantly because you're emotionally connected. So why do we help? Well, obviously it feels good, right? Paying it forward was the other big reason. Whether you've been helped in the past or you just feel guilty, you're Bill Gates, you know, I got a lot of money, maybe I should pay it forward. <laughs> Get into heaven, right? That sort of thing. So you pay it forward, or as in the case of the woman who donated her kidney, she went to pay it forward because somebody helped her father. And then she thought, let me do this for someone else. And then the end factor, which I would never expect, it was people help because it's easy. I asked you for a penny, you say, you know, we want a penny? Here, take a penny. I asked you for a dollar, you know, all right, what do you want now, a dollar? But if I ask you for a dollar in pennies and you have to go to the bank, you start going, this is too much work. Even though it's only still the same dollar in pennies, the more complicated it gets, the less people help. So why are we so infatuated with being a hero? You notice that our top movies are all about being heroes? People are going to Comic-Con conventions, dressing up like heroes. We want to be heroes. Every time there's a villain, we show up with heroes, and a lot more heroes. Even the, earlier this year, someone does something bad, an unknown, you remember this guy? The cowboy hero comes out. Who are the heroes? There's three types of heroes. You have your professional hero, who gets paid to do the job, military, the police. You have your corporate heroes, but they're hoping to get advertising and things like that. And then you have your everyday heroes, regular people going out and helping. So, are you good? You guys seem pretty good. No one's punched a person in the face next to them. That's pretty good. Were you taught to be good, or would you instinctively know this? 
So go home with that question. Thank you.